Yo, 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 we live on location. We out here in H-Town, baby. We came out, I got the blackest one, and we came out here for an HOF, Hall of Fame special. You already edition, know. Man. We came out here, one of the one of the realest ones do it, came one of the leaders of the new school coming out of high school. You know Definitely what I'm saying? Yeah. D-Miles is excited about the, he got his high school, straight out of high school, you know brother. That T to the mat. You know We it. out here, indoor pools, outdoor pools, jet plane, <laughs> man. You know what I'm saying? Hall of Fame edition. We appreciate you, big dog. I appreciate y'all, man. <laughs> You one of our favorite players. When we got to the league, you was just one of them ones that when we seen you, it was on. But man, thank you for coming on our show. I was looking forward to this. Presented by Hennessy. When you first got to the league, who was the first person to bust your ass? Um, I can't say nobody bust my ass, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um. I think Allen Houston gave me the business. I mean, he really Ooh, bust my ass, but Allen Houston, he, he was, you know, I, I couldn't figure him out at first. That jumper. Um, Cause he had a smooth ass jumper and his pace was just, you know, at his own pace. Um, so I, I'll say Allen Houston kind of gave me the business, but nothing too crazy, not, not no 40 or 50 piece, but he <laughs> was he was a tough cover in the beginning. Yeah. You, you turned to a Hall of Famer and you didn't even want to play basketball. Like baseball was it. I heard the old school guys used to try to get you to play mm -hmm. pick up and stuff and you'd be like, nah, I'm cool. Yeah, so <laughs> when I was when I was younger, man, um, I started baseball at five, mm -hmm. right? Um, that was that was my favorite sport. Even in my NBA career, it was still my favorite sport. Mm -hmm. I played bas uh, football when I was eight years old. I didn't really start playing basketball until I was like nine, 10 years old yeah. um, on the park, but it was because I was bullied. I got older cousins, neighborhood full of guys um, that was older. We used to go yeah. to the park all the time. And I used to just stand around and watch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Didn't want to <laughs> play because again, you know, it wasn't my sports. Yeah. And you know, they were playing one-on-one. -on -one. Cousin used to bully me and, and you know, I got out there one time, started playing. Really wasn't, I mean, I was okay, but I really wasn't that good. I used to get, you know, beat down yeah. and bullied. Uh, but having that opportunity to play against older guys, more experienced guys when I was coming up in my childhood really gave me, you know, uh, the competitive nature that I had. Yeah. It really helped me enhance and improve my individual skills yeah. um, with playing on one-on-one. -on -one. So that introduced me to one-on-one -on -one basketball. And from that point on, you know, as I got older, that's all I did was was play one-on-one. -on -one. And, and that, you know, became, you know, getting tough and, um, being able to figure out defenses yeah. and how they play. So playing through, you know, uh, bigger and stronger guys, quicker guys, yeah. is, that was that was my niche. When you start playing organized, when, when, cause you know, you you go from playing in the park where there's no rules, is we call them the fouls, we call them the travels, Bosses. to like, you know, it's different when you get on there and organize, so now y'all got refs, it, you know what I'm saying? The rules are different, you can't stand in the lane, it's three seconds, like, it, I remember when I first got, the plan organized, all these rules came in. It was like, man, that ain't how I played 21 or, <laughs> or two on so two. So it's, it's good that you say that because um, I obviously started playing organized in, in Little League uh, yeah. basketball. But for for people that, you know, go from working, you know, because we didn't have trainers back yeah. then. Which, right. We, we yeah. couldn't even, you know, find a gym to, to hoop in. We had to hoop outside. So a yeah. lot of that consists of one-on-one, -on -one, three three-on-three. We yeah. didn't really play yeah. real structured, organized basketball. Yeah. So for people that was had training at that time, right, and you train and work on your individual skills, but then when you go to that five-on-five -five organized setting, yeah. that coach may put you in a totally different role yeah. than what you was training. Yeah. Right, so it's like your development is a slower process because that coach and that five on five yeah. or organized basketball is really holding you back. Whereas yeah. you one on one, you know what I'm saying, you enhancing and improving your skills and your, your mentality, you can go out there right away. Oh, it doesn't matter. Just like, you know, when we go to the ABCD camps, yeah. oh, that ain't organized. Right. That's me versus you, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Man, Everybody, man, man, every man, man for themselves, yeah, right? So yeah. I, I think, you know, as a as a child, as our childhood and 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 playing one on one basketball is, is coming up in the hood like that, that prepared us 
for those camps yeah. like ABCD, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and even organized basketball more so than training one-on-one -on -one with the trainer or somebody yeah. and then trying to play organized basketball. That that role that a coach would have for you doesn't isn't conducive to yeah. you know your training. Was that your first time going to ABCD camp when you went? Yeah. That was yeah. your first time ever going to get to, Listen, when you when you when you found out I, you got chosen. I didn't know anything about ABCD camps. Yeah. I didn't know anything about anything, any camps when I was in Florida. Bro, yeah. I, I'm you know, I grew up in a town of ten thousand people. Yeah. And in Central Florida. So I knew nothing about no camps. Nothing. <laughs> I played what it was a YBOA or, or yeah. something like that. Um I played in that, but other than like outside of, you know, um, Florida and, and, and major camps. No, that was my first camp. You knew it was the Adidas camps. You know you got to fly all the way across the country to go to this, and it's got the top 300, 400 Elite. players. Like, what was that thought process? Like, I, I just kind of want to know, what was it what, like from the start when you took the plane ticket all the way down to you turned into the number one player in the nation? So, it was opportunity. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was something that I was seeking all alone because again, in high school in Florida, I was- Couldn't nobody see you. No, I was one of the baddest dudes, you know, and I was the baddest dude in my area. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? People in, in you know, my neighboring cities knew who I was, but yeah. outside of that, I was unknown. Yeah. But I knew I had game, you know what I'm saying? And and when I went there, I just kept hearing about Lamar Odom, 16 yeah. point guard. I was like, damn, <laughs> he got 16 and he's a PG. Right. Left handed. And hearing about all these, you know, these these top high school yeah. players, I'm like, all right, I, I, I want to see what they're about. I want to test that out, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So, Lee yeah. Mean, yeah. Greedy Down. Yeah. I, mean, I was, it, it was at that camp, young it was, boy. It was, some, um, it was some nice elite talent, you know, in that camp, but. For me, it was this opportunity to to really uh, set the stage and, and and be what I always wanted to be was an NBA player. Once I was, I you know, I, I got introduced to basketball, yeah. so um, that was just a no brainer for me to go out there and, and, and really display my talent against the elite elite talent in the in the high school uh, rankings. Before you went to Adidas camp, you was averaging like what in high school? I was like 20, 25 and twelve rebounds. Like mm -hmm. my junior year, something like that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> Killing it. Yeah, you know, yeah. had some 40 pieces. Yeah. You no, know? and but I was in such a small area, and and you know, Central yeah. Florida is, is Florida is known back back then was football. Football. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It really wasn't that many basketball players coming out of the state of Florida making it to the league. It was all NFL. I mean, uh, football players. So um, that's why I kind of got overlooked. But to go to that camp, put on, you know, I. It took some strings to be pulled to get me in that camp. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They didn't even want to let me in because yeah. they didn't know who I was. Be like that sometimes. Yeah, yeah they, they they didn't know who I was. So I got the jersey number 175. And then after that first, you. my first game was was LO. Mm -hmm. And my first game was LO and we went head at, you know, we was, we was clashing heads. Yeah. And uh, it was a good showing and people was like, oh, who the hell is that? Yeah. Who's that dude? How was the atmosphere? And uh, they said it was crazy See. in there that, like this was just, you know, when you playing in one of them games, the atmosphere around like, and it's crazy, you being a young young kid from Florida. So from that first game, right? Because LO was the talk. From yeah. that first game, the crowd followed me wherever Everywhere. I played. Yep. They followed they me They want to see if you finna finish they, this out. They want to see if I was for real. Yeah. And I ain't let them down. So yeah. every time I played, it was a show. You know what yeah. I mean? They was just trying to figure out like, man, where this dude come from? You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna tell you the crazy part. Like I told you, I was at the camp. Keon was there, and I, you know, I had already known Keon from playing in AU. Keon do. Yeah. KD, you know, we all turned KD like, man, I'm telling you, we was in like the little players now where they got the video games and all that. He like, man, I'm telling you, man, we got this dude on our team, Tracy McGrady, bro. He like, he cold. He like, he cold, cold. He like, well, nobody know nothing about him. Watch. He like, watch when they get a yeah. load up. So then I remember first, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think we was at Princeton, right? No, it was a, uh, it was a, uh, Fairly Dickinson. Fairly Dickinson, yeah. that's what it was. And the way the course was lined up, bro, it was like all in the yeah. row. You was all in yeah. the road. it don't matter. If you on one court, you could see five courts mm -hmm. over. But you would just see 175 going up across <laughs> court feet and shit, coming out of nowhere like, God damn, dude, somebody come bounce you like, bro. <laughs> then you like, all right, let's take a walk down there yeah. and see what's going on. Yeah. Like, it was like that, it was like, bro. And like he said, the competition, like, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm going from a sophomore to a junior up and I'm like, 
I am like, I gotta get better, boy. Like me and C D L up in there, like, yo, it's real out like, here. Like, like the, the, them boys was out there. Hey, for real, bro. Yeah, but that was that was a um to me, although, you know, I, I played well in that camp, it was actually a confidence booster for me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, you, you get used to playing in, your, in you know, your local talent and you see these guys. You wanna test and yourself. You wanna test yourself against, you know, top guys in the nation. And mm-hmm. That for me, it was like confidence you know, went. Through oh the man, roof. confidence went through the roof. Like, oh, I belong here, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was that plane ride home, back to the crib to tell everybody and the all that stuff. How was that? Nah, it was, it was, um, it was life changing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My my life completely changed. You know, went from unknown to man, that that dude T Mac or yeah. Trace McGrady is for real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He did this at the camp. He killed this guy. Yeah. And, you know, that was, it was just the start of, you know, the journey that I was on, yeah. you know, to my illustrious career. And, uh, you know, I got to thank ABCD for giving me the opportunity because without that, you know, who knows what would have happened. In that all-star game, <laughs> when you windmilled on Buddy, mm. and literally, like, I was one of the people mm. in the stands when, like, you know, the yeah. whole stands went up, like, scouts, bro, they, no, when they yeah. paper for flipping clipboards, <laughs> to, and I'm talking about players from the camp, like, all us in the crowd yeah. watching, because it was like, they was in the senior game, uh-huh. and it was like a junior game for the, like, all star so we, everybody, the whole camp that scouts on that set, like, the rap, the, 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 the it was like, it erupted, it, man, windmill <laughs> on somebody in the damn game. Like, tell me, like, what was going through your mind after that? Cause like, you were pretty chill on the court when it was happening, but it was like the pandemonium around. It was you gotta keep crazy. it cool, huh? You gotta keep it cool. <laughs> Listen, man, shout out, uh, rest in peace, James. I think it was James Felton. Yep. Um, you know, that that dunk, because it's just one game going on at the time. It's an all game, the senior else, game. Nobody yeah. else is playing. So all the campers, all the, the college all coaches, there. everybody is witnessing and watching it. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's standing room only yeah. around the court. I remember, bro, completing that dunk and cats running on the court on both ends, just going crazy. crazy. <laughs> Never been a part of anything like that. You know what I'm saying? You hit a game winner, people, you know, the students there. This was different. Yeah. This was different. <laughs> I'm talking about you got coaches, the players, even the college, the, the college players. Was that, that the was last there. game of the other of the camp? That's the last game. This that's it. This is it. That's the that's exclamation it. point man, on the end. Oh, man. <laughs> Look, this is the cherry on top Listen, of the whole week. It was like, out of work. If you thought all that prior to this was a fluke, I'm gonna give you this. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna end it with I'm this. Gonna I'm, gonna leave you, I'm gonna leave you with this. <laughs> and that was it, man. That was, dude, for years that was talked about. For well, years. I know you did. You know how sometimes you do a dunk and uh, you feel like you you done got up crazy high or you, you oh, yeah. did this or you 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 stretched out a little bit more on the windmill, but when you see it on camera, it looks different. When you first seen that on camera, like you seen that. Have you seen that the video? I've seen it. Yeah, when you first seen it, what was your reaction? You know what's crazy? It? My first time seeing it, I was retired. That, that's what I'm you saying. Know what I'm saying? Like, like, that's look, crazy. this yeah, was yeah. All, this yeah. was always the myth. Yeah. I just seen this video like two, three years yeah. ago. Yeah. It always was the myth of basketball. If you in the basketball world, everybody talk about this. Listen, it's 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 now. I may sound crazy, but when I went when I saw it, yeah, I didn't think it was all that crazy. Uh. But how, I, how the moment I, was. I, I, I didn't, the, it, it was more so the moment than the actual dunk, dunk. to me when, yeah. I, when I went you back and saw it. It's like, it's like growing up in your house, man, in, in, in your house. You think that's the biggest damn house, but boy, as you get you older, and you go tape, back and you're like, that room smaller? Damn! <laughs> <laughs> like, damn, this house smaller. <laughs> <laughs> like, damn. I'm saying? I know the refrigerator is. <laughs> the counter's like, smaller. Damn, dog. This where I used to live, and this damn, I thought this was the biggest room ever. But no, that's what it was. When I went back and saw it, I was like, you know, it was a nice dunk for a seventeen-year-old at that time. And I think it, the moment, though, you know, was legendary. More so for me, looking back on it, I wasn't really enthused with the dunk, but it was just the moment to come back from that camp. And now it's your senior year. Now you know you got to hold on to the ranking, like. The price is on your head now. Like, like you the one. You went from not even being mentioned to the one now. That whole scene, just take it through the process of your senior year. 
being the number one player in the world, having to hold that rank and having to perform every single night because everybody coming to see you. And, you know, this is an era now that KG just went straight out of high school. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, take us through that senior year process of, you know, just keeping up being the best player and going into the McDonald's and... And then you transferred to Mount Zion. Mm -hmm. My yeah. senior year, yeah, I was in Durham, North Carolina. I went to Mount Zion um, to play on more of a national level. Mm -hmm. um, I welcomed that, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I welcomed that. And it was, it was um, having that opportunity present itself. And if that's something that you dream about and you put in the actual work, you prepare it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I was prepared for whatever was thrown at me. Yeah. It, so you it, went it, to Mount Zion to, to get more competition? To I, went, play? I went to Mount Zion to get national um, competition Straight to play up. on that level. Absolutely, because yeah. I wanted to compete against the best. How yeah. was that for like you leaving you your never friends? Away from the like, crib? Dude, dude, I, 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 I'm not going to lie because I never you know, lived outside of Florida. The first few months was tough, but once basketball season started, if I got acclimated with, mm -hmm. you know, my surroundings and everything, every it's like, you know, I'm comfortable now. How did weather hit you though? It wasn't too bad. Oh, you know okay. what I'm saying? I was in North Carolina, it, it, it wasn't too bad. Um, I, I adapted to it, but you know, I, I think what was challenging is living with, you know, 11 other guys. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a neat freak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a neat freak, I'm very punctual, and you know, I, I like things done in certain ways, so, you gotta deal with the eleven other egos. And you gotta deal with nastiness. You, and, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, know, you got hygiene. Yeah. You don't really know. Hey, that's got, the worst. You know what I'm saying? Hygiene and you that, sharing, that uncleanliness. Right, uncleanliness, and you sharing one, one, one bathroom. There's yeah. uh, one cool. bathroom, two shower heads, and one toilet. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like that right there was an adjustment for me. Yeah. Uh, more so than you know my surroundings and, and playing basketball. Basketball, it was just. That was my sanctuary. It was it a player or a coach that like that that school, that academy was the one like, yeah, I want to go over and hoop with them or or a coach. No, you know, I was um I was highly pleased of the the talent that we had on that team. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're talking about Corey Hightower. Corey Hightower mm -hmm. one on one was Lefty from Flint, Michigan nice. was yeah. crazy Shane. nice, mm -hmm. right? Then, it, yeah, yeah, he had that little pack. Yeah, yeah. See, see how I had that little pack hey, between boy, his legs? So but he was, he was so skilled. Um, Travis Spivey, man, from Myrtle Beach. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? He a big tank uh, as a point guard. Max Owens went to uh, North Carolina and played for the Tar Heels. Yeah. Big George Mazik, Donald Little played at Cincinnati. So we had a squad, bro. J.R. Yeah, Raymond mm -hmm. went to uh, Oklahoma. Yeah. So to to be surrounded by you know that everybody type of know talent, how to play. everybody know how to play. So that actually helped you get better and and, and helped yeah. me. You know what I'm saying mentally and physically, you know, evolve as a player. How was it like now in high school? Like it's kind of when you playing on a team like that. It's kind of like. Lightweight getting prepared for college in the NBA because you traveling a lot. Yeah, you, you you doing way more traveling than you was doing with a regular small town school. How was that to be traveling for these different states and you know you coming in, you got your bags going through the airport and you playing in these big classic or mm -hmm. these big events mm -hmm. every city. How was that? Listen, bro, I loved it. You know what I mean? I love being on the road. I love traveling. I love everything about it. You know what yeah. I mean? Just uh, experience, having those different experiences. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because those are memories that we create, you know, as a young. And I always, always remember that and 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 that bond that I had with those guys. Um, it was it was fun, man. You know, it was it was just a lot of fun and just, you know, wishing that those times never end. Right. You know what I mean? Because you know, you you just form that camaraderie with them guys, and we was the second ranked number two in the nation at that time. Could have been ranked number one, but I had a couple of knuckleheads on my team. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, it was it was just a lot of fun because again, th this is out of my element, something that I've never done before, and you know, I was really about my craft. You know, what I'm saying. I was one of the guys, so my we had a basement downstairs um, at our house in North Carolina. We had a TV down there, and then you know I, we lived with the coach and his wife and, and his kids. You know, my guys would go out. You know what I'm saying? Because we surrounded by Black College, North Carolina Central. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and the ratio was like eleven to one. So right. that's all them boys think about, man. I'm, I'm trying to. They sneaking yeah. out of the house. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> going to hang out on the campus. 
I was about my craft, bro. I was in there, I was watching games. I was in there talking to my coach, like, you know, we just sit in there and watch games all night. I wasn't even about trying to sneak out and go hang out. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, my vision was just, my, my mindset was just so bigger. set on, you know, trying to make it to the next level. At what point did you, like, was it right after, cause I know after, after camp things went crazy. Like, was it straight to the league talk then? Or like, when did that, Really coming to your focus like this could be something. Yeah, I could yeah. Really so, do so uh, going in, into my actually into my senior year after that camp, I mean, you started hearing some whispers. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying of what I just did at the ABCD camp, and then when the scene the, the, my senior season started, then college coaches, I mean, uh, pro scouts start showing up at my games. Right, right. And my the coach, polo, my, my, yeah, logo. You know, it. <laughs> you know. You know. <laughs> So my coach would tell me, you know, who's in the building? Yo, such and such is in here. You know what I'm saying? Do your thing tonight. I'm like, shit, bet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bet. Um, so once that, and my coach made a, a big and bold statement my senior year. It was like, yo, Tracy McGrady is the second best player in the state of North Carolina behind Tim Duncan. And mm. boy, when he said that, that <laughs> really opened the floodgates. Like, hold up. Let me see, let's, let let's see go see. Right, like, so, oh man, we started playing in these big arenas, selling them joints out. We played in uh, the Ding Dong where Tar Heels played. Yeah. Mm. I'm talking about packed What was that out. like? We played Oak Hill in there, packed out. I'm like, it's showtime, dog. <laughs> I could not believe I'm actually playing in the Ding Dong and it's packed in here at a high school game. Yeah. Go back home, it's only four or 500 in the yeah, stand. Man, right. I got thousands in here. Man, let's go. Mm -hmm. yeah, I wanna see what it's sick. about. The drink, man, you know, when you, oh, your adrenaline flowing, it's, it's like you, you looking down in the basket and like, oh, <laughs> oh. you know what I'm saying? You oh, jumping high going, shit, right? You going <laughs> crazy, you like, that, man, I'm dropping I'm, that thing through. Dude, you, you either gonna run away from it or, or you, you gonna, gonna go towards it and yeah, attack it. Yeah. I attack that because I, I relish that. Yeah. Do you think about college? Was it a yeah. college that almost got you? I'm, that you I'm, was I'm, just... wearing, I'm wearing my adopted college colors right now, bro. I was going to Kentucky. Mm. Oh, I was going to mm. be a Wildcat, you okay. know what I'm saying? It was crazy is my, my freshman year, they won the championship mm. that year. I took my visit to Kentucky, bro. You, did any one of y'all take a visit? Yeah, I did. I went. Yeah, I did. Wow, you came well, Kentucky. Lodge. <laughs> <It's crazy. laughs> well, I can't lie. Bro, I would have been like that. That like, wait sold a me. <laughs> I walked in there. Wow, y'all. This y'all. This just for y'all. You yeah. say, bro, this is how y'all <laughs> living. That sold That's me. And was. on top of that, all of them pulled up in Eddie Bowers, fully loaded <laughs> Eddie Bowers. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> I'm coming to Kentucky, dog. I don't, I don't want to visit no more, no more colleges. See nobody else. Nah, I'm going to Kentucky. Like Adidas offered you 12 million, like in high school. You you yeah. basically still in high school. Yeah. Like if today's now, how these kids can get the money now? That 12 million would have been what you think? That would have been by. 70. <laughs> that's basically, I mean, that, that that's basically 70, 80 the, piece. The, the, the move that started a movement. When you talk yeah. about that, like you was like one of the first the high school mm -hmm. kids to go straight from high school to the pros and then come straight out the gate with the with a bag. stupid yeah. bag. Your, your shoe deal bigger than your regular contract. You the first, so yeah. that's a move that started a move. Yeah, you was, started that move. Yeah, that was so, a nice bag. So, so. Like what that be like? Though? Like when you, when you get that, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, that you get that phone call. They like, yeah. So they gonna twelve. Do this. You like <laughs> what? What? No, you, know, you know it's crazy, bro. I uh, so when I signed the deal, I wanted to see what a half a million dollars looked like in cash. Ooh. Oh yeah. And yes. I, I, I had I had you know uh, that pulled out, and I just had it on sitting on, on your bed, tape on my bed, bro. <laughs> I just had it on Looking my bed. At it. I just had it on my bed, just rolling around like, damn, bro, this is real. This is real. You're gonna Scrooge McDuck right this there. This is real. <laughs> this, 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 like, this is real because where I come from, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I I, I grew up in, in in Florida, Tampa, Orlando. I'm dead center, yeah. and in my county, I, I live in. I grew up in the biggest county in Florida, mm -hmm. but in my county, and where I grew up in my neighborhood. I grew up in the biggest drug hole mm -hmm. in that in that county, mm -hmm. right? So, if it wasn't for the structure that I had within my my house, you know, who knows? I what probably would have deviated off course. Yeah. And and you know what I'm saying, you grew up in the hood, man. You see crackheads all the time, dog. Yeah. You know, and yeah. as a teenager, 
you get a little curious and 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 and, and want to try to yeah. you know test something out, yeah. not knowing if I didn't have that structure, who knows what would have happened? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So for me, at 18 years old, <clears throat> to retire my mom, you know what I'm saying. My mom was a, a housekeeper at mm-hmm. Disney. My mm-hmm. grandmother worked. Uh, 30 something years as a custodian at my elementary school. And my dad worked at a fertilizer plant. So for me at 18 years old, to retire my peeps, you know, at an early age, yeah. uh, oh, that, that, the impact on, on my life and my family, nothing can supersede that, Yeah, nothing. Did it make you want it even want more out of Absolutely. the league? Absolutely, yeah. That, I, I wasn't satisfied for just, you know, making it to the league and, Receiving a twelve million dollar contract, no, I wanted more. You know, they got the NIL stuff with the with the college kids now. Well, that would have kind of changed something if you can get that twelve million from Adidas and still go to Kentucky. <laughs> I already know the answer. I, you know what? I don't know, man. Because like kids, uh, can, like you can get this money now. Yeah, and you I. Don't gotta, I Skip a process to get it. Cause we had to skip the process I, to get the money. I, I think it would have been a long drawn out process. Mm-hmm. Whereas to when Adidas came to the table with the 12 million, it was instant, I'm going to, I'm going going to the to league. league. You know what I'm saying? So it would have been, I would have had the pros and cons. Whatever that is, yeah. you, know, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, <laughs> well, like, what, what, what is it now? Cause like, you, KG, Kobe, Jermaine O'Neal, like y'all guys wrote the book, the blueprint for me going into the 2000. Like it was the blueprint of the process and everything. Yeah. Like y'all process showed me a, a different thing, but now. It would have been something worth of uh, really, really dissecting. And, um, you know, I, I still don't know which way I I would have leaned, but it would have been a process of, you know, doing my due diligence and, Trying to figure it out, you know. what I mean, I, I I don't know if there's a wrong decision in this when yeah. you when you could get twelve millions to be able to go to college or the pros. I, I don't think that's a wrong decision. How was your process when you like? All right, you you declare you know you got the deal, but now you gotta go work out for teams. Did you have to go do a lot or a little? Bro, I went to like twenty something teams. See, like me. I see, went, you ain't see. He's special. Now, I didn't he, say I I worked out for twenty something. You still saw twenty yeah, something. I, like, I went to like man, twenty man. teams. He ain't bro. see, but like a handful. You know how man, the top pick six, guys. You know, this <laughs> man was six eleven with crazy hey, handles. Uh, you know? But five, see, because what you and KG and Kobe them had did, he was covered. Yeah. he came out yeah, sitting at the table. He came to the table like this, like okay, what's going on? Like he's the next one. Yeah, one of them. Yeah, anywhere near. We ain't, pass, all. we ain't passing up on this one. But <laughs> nah, bro, it was it was like twenty some teams, and it was two of them that I actually absolutely hated. Which one? It was Boston, Boston? Celtics with, with Rick Pitino, and it was New Jersey with John Calipari. Mm. Hated them. Hated that work, especially Rick Pitino. Like, bro, I heard they had brutal workout. Brutal. Everything was conditioning. Brutal. Full court, one on one. It was a lot of conditioning. I hated full court. We was talking I about that. Them like three times. I hated going to the workouts and full court one on one. They telling you to guard them all the way from under the That's goal. That's what I'm saying, I, bro. Like, what we doing? Do here? y'all this realize <laughs> this man is a lot shorter than me, a lot quicker than me? I, <laughs> I gotta chase him. You That's want me to push up on him? <laughs> nah, it's, it's stupid. I, I, I guess that's just a, a competitive spirit, you know, competitive, you know, nature test just to see if you really com- gonna compete. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? More so of really trying to keep somebody in front. How you gonna react if that man busting your ass out here? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You gonna fold or you gonna keep coming back? What is it gonna be? Who did you wanna go to? And who did you thought was gonna get you? I didn't really care. Just anybody? No, yeah, it was just anybody. I really I really care. When I talked to Isaiah Thomas, um, with Toronto, he told me, informed me, he's like, yo, if you sitting around nine, you're gonna be Man. a Toronto, yeah, you're gonna be a Toronto <laughs> Raptor. Um, Golden State was a pick before, but I, I think I was pretty much set on, you know, where I got picked is where I thought I was gonna be selected. What was that moment like for you when 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 you get your name called and you walk across that stage and you shake David Stern hand, knowing like you know everybody you ever known watching you seeing this moment and you like you say you retiring your family right now you achieving that that goal that you worked for. What was that moment like for you? It was uh, such a surreal feeling, man, and um, it was for me. It was providing hope for people back home. 
You know what I'm saying? We all have, um, you know, those local celebrities and, and guys that came before us that should have been in the NBA or mm -hmm. made it mm -hmm. um, on that level. Yeah. Um, but, you know, due to whatever circumstances. So for me, you know, coming from a small town it was just, all right, we got one in, you know what I'm saying? Let me do do my job to really inspire the guys back Open home and just door. provide that hope. So yeah. that's what it was for me. Yeah. Family was just crazy. Did you, you had a whole family there? And nah, I just had my mom and my grandmother. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and they, had, coaches they had that experience with you. Oh, man, my mom, my grandma, <laughs> yo, I mean... You know, you, do they still got the stuff at the house now, though? They do. Exactly. You know that. That's what I'm talking about. Especially my grandmother. My grandmother doesn't get rid of anything of yeah, mine. They ain't letting nothing go. You know what I mean? I walk in the house and to the left, she got everything, That's all the right. articles, <laughs> all the trophies, <laughs> and all that stuff, man. But you know what I mean? It's it, 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 it's 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 satisfying. It's gratifying. You know what I'm saying? To be able to put your family in that position and 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 see you know, your grandmother in that light and your mom in that light and knowing that that struggle is over. Yeah. That's most important to me, like that struggle. I'm like, mom, you ain't gotta go work for nobody else. One thing you know we don't gotta worry about. <laughs> Just go, I want you to enjoy life, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Whatever you wanna do, whatever you dreamed about doing, you could do that. You could do that this You could do that. Yeah. That's, what, that's what I wanted. That's what I always wanted for my grandma. And my grandma always wanted to live on the lake because she loved fishing. Yeah. She used to have me on that bitch at six in the morning, yeah. bro, fishing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Out there That's to my grandma used 12 have. hours, bro. I used to be out there with my grandma. Fishing day, you got to get up early, six in the yes. morning. You can't go fishing and start at 12. When you with them grandmamas, six you got to get up six morning. in the morning. I'm talking about we they, out they there. They loaded up sandwiches, everything. Vienna, <laughs> Vienna sausages, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Vienna. Got my Welch's grape, <laughs> yeah. you know, my the crackers and, and cool sardines. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm sitting yeah. out there. No life jacket. I don't think my grandmother <laughs> yeah. can swim. Shit, I barely can swim. Yeah. You know what I mean? I couldn't but swim at the time, but we was out it, there. It, it taught me patience, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Being out there with my grandmother on that lake, twelve yeah. hours taught yeah. me patience. While all my 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 friends is yeah. probably out playing, you know, pick them up, bust them football, or they got yeah. their games going on. I'm out here chilling with my grandma on the lake, man. You old man now. Nah, I heard the fishing is really into your thing now. Nah, you back on the your fishing till really I, heavy know. now. <laughs> I, I was during the pandemic, you yeah. know, my schedule has since picked up since we opened, but yeah, during the <laughs> pandemic, bro, I was on, I was driving like an hour away to go fish. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's, it was just, it's so peaceful for me. Yeah. You went to Toronto now and, and you got Isaiah, the great Isaiah Thomas up top. You know what I'm saying? Now you playing and, and you on a team with a bunch of veterans, like a bunch, a bunch of veterans. How was your first year in Toronto? You know, you in, you in Canada, y'all steady crossing crossing state lines and coming all the way over the United States playing all these teams. Your schedule is kind of different than most because you coming from Canada. Mm -hmm. Like how was your first year with the travel and just the season and- It was a nightmare. Mm -hmm. it, really, yeah. <laughs> it was a nightmare because I, you know, a lot of people think um, president, you know, GM, head coach is all on, on the same page. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or an owner ownership all on yeah. the same page. It's far from the truth. They was new. It was, uh, yeah, it's far from the truth. So Isaiah Thomas wanted me. My head coach didn't. Yeah. Didn't really care for a high school player. Like, I ain't just, you know, I ain't trying to teach this high school player. Now, he, what do you know? Yeah. But anyway, he was old school. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Didn't give me no structure. Didn't challenge me or anything. It was just throwing me out there. And I was just leaving me to figure things yeah. out on my own. And that was very challenging. And you know, we was clashing heads a lot. I yeah. mean, bro, I, I can remember times where, um, you know, I'll do something, maybe do a turnover or something, and I come out of the game, we go in the locker room after the game, I probably played five, seven minutes. You talking about me. He talking about me. <laughs> we just up. lost by 20, and the blame is on me. All right. Like, bro, what? Yeah. So I couldn't really process that, bro. Yeah. I'm 18 years old, I couldn't process that, so, I. I was a knucklehead, yeah, and I wasn't going to allow that man to beat me down like that. So yeah. you know, we were going at it. Yeah, um, I think Isaiah Thomas recognized that. You know what I'm saying? In the first half of that season, Butch Carter was my assistant coach at the time, and he ended up taking over because uh, Daryl Walker got fired, and Butch laid it out. Kid, he used to call me Kid. Kid, do you want to play 20 minutes? This don't have to do this, this, and this. Like, cool, all right, mm -hmm. I understand that. You don't have to get in here early. 
You're going to have to work with such and such if you want to, you know, get these minutes. You're going to have to stay after. You're going to come in and watch film. I get it. I, I'm cool with that, but I just needed, you know, somebody structure, to guide yeah. me and give me some structure, yeah. right? I, I could do all that. I'm yeah. willing to do I want to do that because, you know, I, I love this game. So he gave me that. And, man, um, from that point on, you know, I just started, you know, yeah. rising up and, and, and leveling up to uh, where I felt confident that I really can play in this league. But, you know, we won 16 games that year, bro. Yeah. What, what, what you doing, they bro? They don't understand the 16 yeah. game. Yeah. When you win 16 right. out of 82. Man, bro. I did it twice. What? I'm talking about, boy, like, when you on. win 16 <laughs> out of 82. Bro, we won 16 games. We what, in the what? third quarter, like, yeah, what are we eating tonight? What are we, <laughs> like, this what, shit over. What are we doing? Yeah. Develop the young player, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How was it for you when when you when you saw they drafted, they got Vince, and you know that's that's your family, y'all done played there, you together, and, and he already gonna be a star coming in. How was that to know you about to get I, the I had a lot to do with that. Um, you know, I told but I was like, yo. We got to get my cousin over here, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, first of all, I think he's the most gifted dude in his draft. He definitely so was. We definitely, <laughs> he definitely so we was. got we, we got to get him. Um, but it was, for me, I, I, I like to sit back and I like to listen. I like to learn. Um, and to have him his rookie year and, and reach stardom like that. Right. Because you know, I knew my time was going to come. Yeah. It just wasn't at that moment. So to have him flourish the way he did, it was just, you know, sit back and, and learn from how he handles that. Yeah. His rookie year, yo, he I, I couldn't believe some I remember of the, the first dunk that he, he that windmill on, on Mullen, Chris Mullen. I said, listen, ooh, this gonna be some smoke listen, in the city. Bro, the <laughs> stuff this dude was doing his rookie year, man. I <laughs> I could not believe a human was doing that, bro. <laughs> Straight yeah, up. Well, it like on one of the benefits yeah. of us being so close and, and playing to each other, if we, you know, if you're going through something with the coach, you're going through something the team in a situation, he, he always had somebody that was in the locker room with him, not like your friend you got at home where yeah. you could go and be like, man, this happened and he instantly taking my side because I'm snapping, but I was there. And we can bounce off of here. Hit me, like, yeah, Demise, you was tripping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. that one. Yeah, yeah I, I'm with you, bro. But yeah. you was tripping. Yeah. How, was that with you and Vince? That like, man, I got somebody in the locker room that understand where I'm coming from. See the work I'm putting in, and get that. Nah, yeah. nah, it was no. Well, we, you know who we had on that team? Charles Oakley, <laughs> Kevin Willis, Muggsy Bowles, Muggsy. Dale Curry, D Brown, yeah. Antonio Davis. Oh, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. So they held us accountable. Right. You know what I mean? Okay. Like we couldn't get away with yeah, nothing. Real OGs. But yeah, we had some real OGs. And when I say OGs, Oak is the OG of all OGs. Yeah. Like we felt like big brother. You know what I'm saying? I, I you you got a bunch of big brothers in the neighborhood and somebody mess with you. You know what I'm saying? You go pick a fight, smack them on the head, and run behind your brothers. Like that's <laughs> yeah. how we were. Big Oak. That, that's how we were. You know, Oak was like, y'all ain't touching my young fellas. Yeah. Y'all ain't y'all ain't messing yeah. with them. And if you file one of them hard. It's a retaliation. It's a retaliation <laughs> yeah. that's coming. Back when they People retired. don't know, like when I was in Cleveland, Oak was like retired and he's from Cleveland. And when I was in Cleveland, Oak used to invite me over Oak. his house all Everybody. the time and cook. Everybody. Well, people don't know the the loving part what? of Oak because they always put out that, oh, he's fighting and all this stuff. But that's not true. That's Man. why a lot of players respect him because he shows a lot of love and he love hard. Oak, one of the most genuine dudes you'll ever meet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just. He 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 rocks with you, man. And um, you know, even to this day I still talk to Oak, but man, he used to invite the whole family over to the crib yeah. and cook for us. Cook. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Man. You invite your whole teammates, your whole uh team, coaches and everybody into your home. You're a good brother, man. Because yeah. a lot of people, you know, just they they just don't have that in them to do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They like just like to be with themselves. No, no offense to it, but Oak is inviting. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He welcomes that. And we had just I think it allows a team to really uh, gravitate towards each other and, 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 and that bonding, you know what I'm saying? Because they could just sit around, tell some stories, you know, drink their crown or whatever they was drinking <laughs> and, and, and enjoy. My senior year was the All-Star game in the Bay Area. My senior year, and I remember we had a game that night and I left the game. Soon as the game was over, I'm running out. I'm running out because you and, and, and Vince is finna be in a dunk contest. No, Vince was about to be in a dunk contest. <laughs> What made you choose to like you? You seen Vince doing this this all year. What made you choose to be like, nah, I'm a, I'm gonna do it with him, man. We gonna do it together. Nah, it wasn't like that. 
Like, I mean, it went, yeah, he had to convince me. I heard that. Um, <laughs> he had to convince me, and I'm talking about probably to the last hour. Yeah. So I'm like, bro, because you know we lived in the same building, and I'm like, cuz. Why the hell I'm getting in this dunk contest and you with it? Like, <laughs> yeah. well, we know what's gonna happen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm not for losing. Like, come on, man. You know, it it'd be good exposure for you and this and that. I'm just turning him down. Like, nah, bro. I, I but I'm with you every day. Yeah. I see what you can do. I can't do that. <laughs> man, you underestimate yourself, cause you 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 can, man. You creative. I'm creative, but that shit you on. <laughs> that's, that's 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 another level, bro. So I just sucked it up, man. All right, bro. Let's go. Let's let's do it. But man, that first dunk set the tone. Oh, that that three sixty windmill. We ain't never like, seen that before. That vibe, you, have you like seen that, that before out of him? Listen, you see it bro. On TV, but yeah. tell me, what was Listen, that feeling bro. like when that happened? And you were contesting the lead up to it. <laughs> What was the lead up Man, to it? I didn't know he was about to do that. <laughs> I didn't know he was about to do that. So I think who was it? it was it was Stackhouse? It was me, um, Steve, Steve Francis. Steve, yeah, Francis. Was yeah. Baron in there? Yep. Yeah. He was in it. Boy, when he did that dump, everybody looked at Jerry Stackhouse. He was next. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How you follow that up? Huh? Everybody looked at Jerry Stock. I was like, ah, good luck, brother. <laughs> but, hey, boy, that's a hard following right there, Ooh. boy. That was tough. If, if it was anybody else, you would have won that, that, that dunk contest. I mean, me, yeah, I mean, yeah, you I would say, you know, though. I would say me and Steve put on, uh, and, and, you know, and Steve we put, put on, on an incredible yeah, we put show. on a good show. But, I mean, Vince just, you know, that, that's. <laughs> Did you know he was going to. Th- Go between his legs off the bounce? No, we didn't, we didn't practice that. So that, that. That was just random, like- That was improv. Bouncing in that front was improv. of the goal we, we didn't, just, We, dog, no, that was just- That was a show. That was like one of the most, my, like that's one of my true. NBA memories. Like that's always sticking in my head that weekend. Cause I ran home, got over my homeboy house. And yeah. We watched that and it was just, we was hyped like we was there. That's how it was hyping you, Steve. I, and, and, I listen. We almost then. didn't make it because of the, the traffic, and it was raining like crazy that night. Mm. And we got stuck in traffic. I wasn't tripping. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't tripping at all. Vince will tell you, I wasn't tripping. I was like, I will. <laughs> we first got drafted. The first thing we ever went to that was anything was Old Summer Groove. Oh, so yeah. we get yeah. that, and this was the yeah. year right after y'all did that. And like, remember when we pull up? Yeah, this next summer. You and Vince getting out the Rolls Royce, going in the hotel. We like, oh. did you we, just we, see that? Did we, you just see that? It was like, hold oh, on. Oh. That was when Vince had the little teaser, um, the, what was it, the, the t-shirt when he was going to Yeah. Bed. We like, and then it was like, you know who was that? That was like the, the, the who's who. That was the who's yeah. who. Yes, sir. The, we all, uh, yeah. Like, everybody. Yeah. from KG. I call Chicken Pop, I ain't, I ain't see everybody. He playing the game, but I got that, like, Iverson. Was yeah. like, bro, when I got yeah. there, like that was like for real my introduction to Lee. Like, yo, this is what this shit is like yeah. every time. Like, <laughs> like, yo, it was like, and I really felt like, you know, because everybody was super cool, mm-hmm. super solid, hollering at you. I was like, I'm coming back to the room. This boy getting getting oatmeal baths. I'm like, bro, I went out with AI tonight. He like, no, I don't want that shit. I'm like, bro, I mean, such and such a thing. Like, I was with man, I was with all of them. Like, no, nah, that was a great time, man. Zoe had uh, he had the lead rocking in in the summertime with that summer groove because everybody and their mama came down there, bro. First class. I know how. You always want to show your opportunity in, in, in Toronto so that you get the opportunity to leave. Like, what made it, because Orlando the crib, that's why you went to Orlando, or, or could have been like other, in the free agency, could have been like other teams that nah. you possibly went to? Nah, nah, I think um, other teams, Toronto, they were just competing against me going back home. Yeah. You know, that's all that was. Um, you know, hindsight, people like, man, you shouldn't have never left Toronto. Well, y'all never would have said that if Grant Hill was healthy in Orlando. Yeah. Right? You know what I mean? So yeah. um, it was just a, a matter of, you know, other teams competing against me wanting to go back and play home. It was nothing against Vince. It was nothing against Toronto. It was nothing against no other. Because, yeah. you know, Miami wanted me back. And Chicago wanted me so bad. Did you bro. almost get traded, though, for, 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 for was it Scotty? That was draft night. On draft night. Draft night, I almost got traded for Scotty. They, um, the night before the draft, Jerry Krause called my agent, got me up 
12 o'clock at night, had me go to a secret location to take a physical. It was about to go down, but MJ made the calls like, yo, if y'all do that, I'm retiring. So mm. <laughs> you stopped that real quick. And then when I was a free agent in 99, 2000, after that season, he came back again trying to get me Jerry yeah. Krause. I, when I tell you, you rolled out the red carpet, mm. bro. I mean, boy, I, I, as soon as I got off the plane, they had a band. They had the cheerleaders. <laughs> they had Benny the Boom. They had him there. <laughs> I'm walking through. I'm like, wow. They had the red carpet, bro. Yeah. Mm. So I go, I go there. Um, I go to the Chicago Cubs game, man. Um, uh, Elton Brand. We had the Chicago Cubs, man. I threw out the first pitch, and I'm sitting in the dugout, bro. And then I look up, and I got they got the plane, you know, oh, with, with, the, with, with, with my advertising on. I was like, damn, welcome to Chicago or whatever it said. Right, I don't right. remember. And then they sent me a tape, bro. Oprah. Mm. Oprah speaking to me personally, mm. personalized <laughs> message. Yeah, I'm like, y'all out. went all yeah, out. But out. <laughs> again, man, it was just, you know, Orlando. Cause I used to ride by the arena all the time. And I told my mom, I was like, I'm gonna be playing for them one day. When did you hear like, it's a possibility of, of Grant and Duncan coming with you too to- No, 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 no. Me going with them. That's the oh, way. so they were supposed to be there before you? Yeah. yeah. No, oh. no, what I'm saying is they were recruiting both of them before they was recruiting me. Mm. Gotta think. Okay. I'm only in my third year. Mm -hmm. I was a bench player. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I came off the bench. You talking right. about <laughs> you know, yeah. Tim Duncan and Grant Hill. Right. And uh, I was just throwing in there. You mm. know? But once I found out what happened with the Tim Duncan situation, I mean. Please, I I'm please like, enlighten us. I know this story. I, I still haven't had that conversation with Doc, so. It's, it's speculation, you know what I'm saying, that he uh, wouldn't allow Tim Duncan, because I guess Tim Duncan wanted, you know, his spouse um, to, to travel on the plane, you know, to some of the games or whatever on the road. And Doc wouldn't allow that. So that was a deal breaker for him. Mm. And what? That, that's they do what that I, anyway. Like some, uh, some teams do, yeah. yes. That's what I heard, and that was a deal breaker. That's why Tim Duncan in Wow. Was. That could have changed the whole course. I could have got him one early. That could have changed my life. One. Yeah. Whole course of history some, yeah. would be then. That's like yeah, the alter yeah, universe. For sure. <laughs> yeah. for sure. For sure. That that was that could have been a game changer in, in a lot of people's lives. The, the trajectory of the, the league back then. Yeah. We came in in 2000, and of course, I, I knew who you was, and I done watched your games and, and, and paying attention to your career. But you didn't, you wasn't playing how you was playing when you got to <laughs> Orlando. We played y'all in, in 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 L.A., and you had like thirty six or like thirty eight, and I was like, man, how he get that good like just overnight like that? He wasn't even playing like that last year, and you instantly just went to like cause like. When, I, when we got to the league, Kobe on the perimeter mm -hmm. and you, mm -hmm. and then it was like Ray Allen and everybody else, but you and Kobe was like totally different mm -hmm. from everybody else. Like, what was the jump? Like, where, where we missed it at that you went from like Toronto and then you got this Orlando Magic jersey, you instantly top five in scoring, you instantly, like the, the team just didn't flip the scripts and changed completely. It was opportunity. It was, it was, it was, it was liberation. Yeah, <laughs> we all want that as a player, right? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. So um, again, I go from being a, a, a role player in Toronto, my my last year there, to being handed the keys. You know, I was the first player to sign a max contract as a bench player. Yeah. You know what I mean. So it was just opportunity. It was a liberation for me to have that that freedom to go out and do what I do. I, I didn't know I was going to be a 25 point score, you know, maybe 20, you know, yeah. have six assists, five rebounds, something like that. But, you know, I put in a lot of work and I trusted that that work that I put in and, you know, and the result of that, I had a phenomenal year. My homeboy, when I went back home after my first year, he was like, man, who's the hardest to guard? I was like, man, Kobe and T-Mac, man, them boys, there is nothing nice. You know what I'm talking about? They do everything. You, you, you shot threes, you, you went to the basket. Tell me, like, it had to be somewhere, like he said, between Toronto and Orlando. When and how did you develop 
one of the most deadliest damn hang dribbles <laughs> to the jump shot oh in the history. Like, listen, oh that was one move that I could say, I I'm gonna take shit. this away, but I gotta go. I would have stripped him of that, that uh, like immediately. Cause, that, that cause yeah. your hang dribble was so deadly cause yeah. it went perfect into how you shot. shot. So you had everything you out of pull, it. And right. motherfuckers had to right, respect. Right, right. Like when and like, how did you develop that to become that leap? So, um, I didn't have a right to left crossover. My my crossover was left to right, mm, right? Okay. You know, that's it was like, you know, it was wide. You know, just watching AI, watching Kobe doing that crossover. And I always, if I make one move, I always want to have a counter move to that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, too. And, and, and another counter move, right? Yeah. So it's just constant work. You know, I'm being a student of the game. You know, go to the crossover. Oh, how can I turn that into something counter? So I'll same movement, right? Same movement with it, but instead of putting it on the floor, I'll just curl it up. Yeah, and it's like right the, into my shot uh, pocket. Yeah, exactly. A right-handed you know player always love coming from they left, left to, to the right. right, left to the right. <laughs> so that was just something that I worked on religiously, and and it just became part of who I was. How was the first All Star game that you'd have been to? How was it that when you got chose, like, man, I'm going to All-Star? No, that, that, that was, you know, being selected an All-Star for the first year. I mean, obviously, overly um, excited about that. And, uh, you know, just couldn't wait to to experience that, you know, because grew up watching the All-Star games and watching the fun that these guys are having out there and just to be in that locker room with all the guys at that time because – you know, we all live our, our our lives and, you know, go separate ways in the off season. You don't really get opportunity to talk to a lot of these guys, yeah. right? So that's opportunity that, you know, I really look forward to just to, you know, see how they prepare and see what those conversations are. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Around, yeah, just to be around those dude. But the game itself, dog, I was so nervous. Mm. <laughs> I was so nervous, bro, just being my first one. I was like, I didn't know what to expect. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, dog, I'm out here with all these dudes, man. It was in DC. I think I had like two points that game, but it was probably one of the best All Star games ever. Yeah, those when we came, the, came back. Oh man, game, yeah. that was oh, that, that was, was a show. Live. Stefan and uh, AI. AI was putting on yeah. a show that game, yeah. bro. But I was nervous though, man. But you know, it was a joy to be there. Um, yeah. But once I got my feet wet in that first one, yeah. oh shit. You know, it was like, okay, I belong here. So you go from becoming an all-star 01, you got you got most improved that year. Then you become the youngest scoring champion, period. Back to back seasons. Like how like how how, how was that from going from, you know, like you said, you experienced all star, then you get an award, you know what I'm saying? Most improved. What was that like? It was um it was like things was just manifesting you know, for me because of the work that I was putting in. So, um, you know, it was um, just rewarding, man. You know what I'm saying? And and when you receive that, you know, knowing that the work that you put in and you, you're getting rewarded for that, you want more, you know? So I became, you know, just a workaholic, you know what I'm saying? Just grinding. I, I didn't get complacent and I didn't let that stop me from, you know, trying to be better. Um, so when, in, you know, most improved, it was cool getting awards, um, making the all-star game was cool. I, I think once you do that for, for so many years, it's like, okay, the individual accolades is cool. I want to win. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, that's, I, that's what I want to do. I want to win. You know, this is, this is great yeah. individually, but man, let's, man, we're going to start. Some games, <laughs> like, yeah, let's win. Around. So like, even with. That transition, like, you know, cause like Grant Hill, he signed there, but he can't play. So you know that's 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 like that's where you're helping and and that money's gone. So you can't, you know what I'm saying? It's hard to even and at the time you couldn't just pay three big time mm -hmm. players. Mm -hmm. You can get two off. So to 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 be in that a lot of people don't know to just be in that position, you know what I'm saying? It's like nothing the franchise can really do. They can only bring you a certain type of player mm -hmm. and, and hoping they are diamond in the rough. Where they can come in and kind of be like you help change mm -hmm. this. So mm -hmm. how was that? Just them years knowing that you can't get no help, and it's kind of not disrespecting your teammates, but it's kind of like you being a one man gang. It was tough, bro. You know what I'm saying? Um, it was cool for a couple years because 
you know, those three years in Toronto was just a learning experience and just trying to get, you know, acclimate, acclimated with the, the NBA game uh, and, and really show that, you know, I belong in this league. Mm-hmm. Um, so those first two years is like, okay, you know, I've accomplished some things individually, mm-hmm. but all right, I'm getting tired now. Let's, you know, get me some help in here. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I want to start winning. And, yeah. you know, at the brunt of that, it was, I understood that we were pigeonholed because of Grant, mm-hmm. you know, so... They did a great job of drafting our first year there. We got Mike Miller. Mike Miller. But then it was like after that, they had some, you know, poor drafts um, with the guys that they drafted that really didn't pan out the way they wanted them to. So trade away Mike Miller for whatever reason, I don't know. Yeah. Um, you brought in, you know, two rookies my, my third year there. We had- Drew Gooden. Drew Gooden. Yeah. We had uh, Gordon Giracek. Yeah. Um, you know, all, all with, and what they brought was 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 great, but I I just thought at that time Mike would have been a better fit because you know he had some years well, on his belt. Playing good, yeah, he's but... playing really good. He he helps me spread yeah. the floor. Yeah. Um, he ran rookie of the year because yeah he did like... he did <laughs> yeah and and bringing in two rookies it was tough you know yeah. Drew played hard as shit yeah. you know what I'm saying played extremely hard but I needed much more experience at that time and they traded that away so I got frustrated. You know, we come back the next year. They traded away some more guys. Daryl Armstrong is gone. Yeah. Got a bunch of young guys. Six man of the year. Yeah, and it was just you know it was downhill from there. Was it hard to to leave Orlando? Hell the- yeah! <laughs> like, yeah I can't saying. even let you get the question off. But yeah, it was, bro. <laughs> was it was it hard to see what Grant was going through? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that 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 was tough. I think it was tough for both of us because, you know. Going through that search, like G Hill, bro, Scotty Pippen, my, yeah. like G G Hill, he was one was, of them. Man, he was yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was one of them. And I just knew if I had G Hill, there's no doubt in my mind I would have played for a championship in the East. There's no doubt yeah. in my mind. Myself, G Hill, and Mike Miller, that that trio right there, there's no doubt a healthy G Hill. But him fighting back, you know, trying to get back on that court. And and I give it to him. He was trying his he was ass fighting. off. He was trying he was his fighting. ass off to yeah. get on that court, man. But he then he got, don't got no more ankle. He was fighting right. so much. And then he, he got that <laughs> infection, and yeah. you know, dude almost had you know some real major problems with his ankle. Um, but man, I just know the potential we would have had, bro, if we would have had him. And you know, it's just unfortunate. And he he felt that too. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's I, I'm sure if you ask him, that's one of the things that you know. He uh he has problem you know getting over with. Yeah, how was it? Uh, you know, you, you, now you finna leave and now you finna go and play with Yao Ming. You know, this is arguably the most famous player in the league at the time, especially worldwide. And uh, he didn't got better. He's not the Yao Ming that first came in mm-hmm. the league. He actually you you got him when like he <laughs> he he I can play against Shaq and hold my own and with any other center in the league. It's a perfect combination. So how was it like you knowing you finna go over there with y'all to to, to bring help and y'all to achieve something? Because I felt like y'all y'all was the team that at the time now Kobe Shaq all them going y'all was the team. No, to, to no, do no. We was we was so far. We was missing so many so much. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah, we had us too, but you know the ancillary pieces around was lacking. We didn't we didn't have that. You know what I mean? Um, I thought Betty and 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 that and that Ryan. was that was later. Yeah, they came. Later. Yeah, that was later. Um, we we kind of struggled our, our first year until mm-hmm. we made some trades, but it was an adjustment for me because I never played with a big man. You know, my game was up, let's up go. like this. Like, let's get it up and go. So I, you know, my slow it down. My first my first year with the the Rockets. Um, I'm coming off leading the NBA and scoring twice. Jeff Van Gundy tells me he's like, you know, I know you're just coming off. You know, being a two-time scoring champ, but you're not gonna do that here. <laughs> Just told me like that. He was like, "You're not gonna lead the league in scoring here." Yeah. You know, we gotta slow it down and get the ball to the big man. It's like, all right, cool, right? I mean, I've been looking for somebody to be, you Juicy know, alone, yeah, yeah, alongside of me that could take that load off. So yeah. it was a struggle, man. You know what I mean? To to where I had had to learn how where to pick my spots. You know what I'm saying? And how to to. I was deferring too much in the beginning to Yao uh-huh. instead of just Doing being you. me. Right. Big fella, you gotta catch up, you gotta get in where you fit in. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And once I realized that, like, 
we're going to get y'all the ball, but I got to be me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then we got to have some pieces around to actually open up, you know, this this paint for me and, and, and y'all to be able to work. So it was a challenge, but, you know, it was fun, um, you know, having him and seeing his development because he was a problem. Now that you ready, like I got yeah, I see the development, see that we can be a, a good team, we can start competing and nagging injuries, mm -hmm. like stuff you gotta persevere from. Mm -hmm. Like, cause you know, the average friend don't know that we be hurt probably 50% of the time. Oh, for sure. Like, I don't care what yeah. it is. It might Something, be something's thing. hurting. Something, yeah. like you might just went out there and stretched too much and you pulled something sure. a little bit, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, how was that just knowing like, I right, it's, it's finally time that I feel like I really got a, a team that can really compete and got these nagging injuries and I wanna be my best every night, the pressure of being your best every night? Um, I, I think for me, having going through, you know, some injuries in um, Orlando with my back, you know, I, I learned how to, you know, play through that. Mm -hmm. Cause in Orlando is my back, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That I was dealing with, cause I got a slight case of scoliosis in my back yeah. that people don't know she about. Was having them yeah, problems. right. So I, 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 yeah, that's what I had. So I learned how to play through that. Um, when I got to Houston, cause those four years, I was averaging 40 plus minutes, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And in the playoffs, I was averaging like 45 minutes. And you know, playoff minutes and regular season minutes, mm -hmm. it's totally, totally different, different minutes. And I'm talking about, I'm not getting swept in the playoffs. Like I'm actually taking teams to six and seven games and playing 40 something minutes. Uh, it was, it took a toll on me. So, Every other day. So I get to Houston, my athleticism decreases mm -hmm. a little bit. You know, I'm still I'm a cerebral player. Um, I'm highly skilled, I still can play at a high level, but I got to kind of change my game a little bit. Um, injuries started piling up. My my knee started giving out on me. Y'all started dealing with some injuries. Yeah. It was, you know, frustrating because I, I felt like, you know, we we had a, a, a great uh, duo and just slowly, you know, adding the pieces to us and when we finally got that piece where I felt like we can be a contender and run our test to our team, along with Shane Battier, Chuck Hayes, you know, Skip, my knee blows out. Mm -hmm. I'm no good. Mm -hmm. No good. At the time where, damn, we got a chance this year. And my 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 knee is just done, bro. Mm -hmm. I, I have I'm bone on bone. I gotta have microfracture yeah, surgery. Me too. Yeah. But but backing up to that though, um, it was one year where I think we played Dallas my first year and uh, yeah, we played Dallas my first year in, in, in Houston in the playoffs and we took them seven games. Like yeah. we won the first two games in Dallas, bro. I remember I that. all I them remember thrashes that. over Sean Brad. I ain't never seen bro. nobody but you and this dude dunk on him so many times. <laughs> we go to Houston, lose two games, go back to Dallas, lose, and then we come back for game six and blow them out. Game seven, I'm hyped. I'm like, bro, we got this. Boy, they went small ball. They had Marquise Daniels, Josh Howard Josh playing Howard. the four and the five, yeah. Michael Finley. They went small ball. Man, they blew us up by 40. Cause we, like, how you gonna play Yao against them? Right. You know what I'm saying? When you go small ball, we don't really have no advantage. He can't guard them dudes on the perimeter. And that's all they was doing. We had Yao guarding Josh Howard, bro. Right, yeah. I want you to take me back and walk me through this. December 9th, 2004, <laughs> 13 points in 35 damn <laughs> seconds. I seen the highlights, we all did, but I want you, cause that's some blackout shit right yeah. there. Like, tell me what you remember, yeah. if you even remember how it went down. Like Get the Spurs too. This. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, that you, you know, man, we do stuff in our careers and, and at nights where we, we, we put in work, bro. You know what I'm saying? We put in work. How many threes you hit? What was the most threes you hit in the game? 10, yeah, 12, something like that? 9 to 10, 9 to 10. Yeah, you put in work to do that shit. I ain't never did that. I hit eight, but yeah. shit, 9, 10, 3, <laughs> bro, that's, that's, bro, you put in work. What was your career high? 47. 47, you put in work. All that shit that you did in the off season, that's the manifestation of that work that we put in. Mm -hmm. We just don't know. We gonna have nights like that yeah. because we got greatness in us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We have that in us. We don't know when it's gonna come out, but shit. It's gonna display, it's gonna reveal itself yeah. sooner or later. 
And that was just one of those nights, you know, it's just the work was already put in in the off season. And it was just, listen, man, I, I feel like I could take over this game. Let me do it. When I think about that game is, I don't even see your players. Like, I don't even see nobody <laughs> play for you. It just seems like I see Spurs players and you. <laughs> like, you just go off for 13 just real quick. Just like, like that's that's, that's how that, when I look at that highlight, that's why all I remember is the defense players and just you. Like, I was, you know, you know, when you get in those zones, dog, it ain't nothing the defender can do to you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It ain't nothing you could do when, a, when somebody's filling it in our league. Good luck. Good good luck. Yeah. yeah, and that was just one of those nights, man. I mean, it was just happened to be 13 points and 35 seconds to come back on a great defensive team and win that game. But, you know, I'll take it. It was a good moment. I know couldn't nobody stop you, but who was some of like the great good defenders that you'd be like, man, yeah, I'm, I'm not even finna play with him because I know he not going to quit. He not going to quit on this. I can't do this with him. I, I can't just... No, you pity pat dribble with the ball. Yeah. Like I know with, with Ron Artis, his hands was always good. Strong. I never played with Strong. him when I dribbled. I'm doing what I supposed to do. No extra dribbles, no, no nothing, because <laughs> I, I tell, know his hands I is wild. I tell I tell my man that. <laughs> he, he, that's that's the example that I use. Everything that you just said about Ron, yeah. that's what I tell people. Like, I didn't play with him. Yeah. You know, I'm it's, it's business. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. He a dog and, and Ron just Ron ain't got them all, bro. Yeah. Ron, Ron is just like, hey, man, I, I don't care who you are. You know what I'm saying? Like, he he has that mentality, and you can't play around with him. He got long, strong arms, yeah. legs strong, <laughs> and if you sitting there trying to play at the ball, he's going to yeah. rip you. So it was just like I I attacked him. Yeah, you know what I mean? So what he, he, was, he was one of the guys that I really enjoyed playing against because I knew he was never going back down, yeah. and I relished that. Like, I love that. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't going to back down on the offensive end. He wasn't going to back down on the defensive end. He's yeah. going to keep coming at you. So those those are matchups that I love because yeah. it, it brings the best out of you. And it's like, you know, that's what the league should be, competition. Like, what you made of? Let's see what you got. I want to go to when you left Houston and you get to New York. It's a oh, funny story God, because God. my guy, my guy, right here, Cheddar bro. Cheese, Al Harrington was there waiting boy, for you. Boy, that boy. And he loves to tell <laughs> me the story because, no, this is the best part. Because it was like the year before I, I did to him I what he did to you. <laughs> what the year before, <laughs> this is exactly what I have the year before. Oh. I'll get to the Knicks like, yo, son, yo, son, I'm home, it's on, I'm here. Like, we in New York, yo, I was like, <laughs> you know where yo. we was at at this point, right? Bro. I don't want to be the guy that ran on your parade, Bro. but I was sitting there, he all excited, yeah, yo, yo, I'm like, come sit by me for a minute, like, listen. Just Boy. relax. It's just relax. You just need to what taper you all that excitement you got going on. <laughs> yeah. So look, fast forward a year later, I leave, go to Miami. T Mac come in. He like, he, I, when I finally see Al, he like, yo, bro. He like, I had to, I had to talk. I had to do T Mac the same way <laughs> he you did. Me. He like, man, T Mac come in like, yo, I'm feeling good. Like we could do this. Like we got this. We got that. Al so he was sitting there like. That boy said, Come nah, man. <laughs> he said, no, nah, man. Come, he said, calm that down, man. <laughs> no. I'm like, bro, what you mean, bro? He's like, you'll see, man. Like, <laughs> like, and, like I, and I'm like, I'm excited, bro, because you know, I, I, it's the I, got, garden. I got a frustrated, uh, I'm, I'm frustrated with Houston. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm tr I've been trying, I've been sitting at home just working out, trying to get up out of there. Now, mind you, I'm still hurt. I'm I'm not a hundred percent. I'm dragging my left leg, but I'm excited. But I'm like, mine man, is fresh. Man, and hungry. My, listen, yeah. bro. I'm in the garden every night. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm off sheer adrenaline. I come in there, play against Katie and Russ, put up 26. I'm feeling good. When reality set in. <laughs> <laughs> this shit ain't gonna work. I said, man, what I got myself in my no. book. <laughs> <laughs> bro, what's going on around here? Yeah. Right? It, man, I, I was shocked, bro. And that right there just told me, it's like, bro, it's only four or five teams every year trying to win in this league, bro. Yeah. 
You got it. a chance to. That's it. That's yeah. that's really that, trying to win. I came in there like, yo, man, that's oh, what we I can was. make the playoffs. We ain't that far <laughs> out. We can make the playoffs still, bro. Let's go. Let's yo, go. When I say that is what? the identical way, Al, that's what's so fucking <laughs> Al had to tell when I first saw he like, yo, son, he like I gotta tell you, yo. He was like, I had I had the GT back <laughs> yeah, with you. He like, I, I, he like, I came in, I had my stuff. I'm like, yo, son, I'm finally home, B. I'm finally man. I was like, yeah, yeah, chill that yo, out, bro. Man. <laughs> yeah. You know, when we, we playing this game and you know, we watching and, and man, we hear some of the dopest nicknames out there. Like everybody want a nickname. You want just your jersey, you want a nickname. When you first heard T Mac. Well, I was been called that off my whole childhood. You know oh, what I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. I I've been so called when, that when back. you heard the world scream T Mac, like calling you T Mac, because like, you know, people call you by your name. Yeah. And I used to tell people, people who don't know me call me Darius Miles yeah. or, or certain things, right. but people who know me call me something different. Yeah. The world is calling you T-Mac now. Yeah. Um, it, it didn't sway me either way because, like I said, I was getting called that when I was you know, yeah. a kid. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, my dad is T-Mac. People call my dad T-Mac because I'm a junior. <laughs> yeah, so that was just my name. And, you know... I made that known yeah, when I'm yeah. doing my interviews or when I'm talking to people, you know what I'm saying? Like that, this is my name. Um, so it didn't really sway me either, for, either either way if they call me Trace or T-Mac, but you know, I did make a household name yeah, yeah. Um, for making it T-Mac. And, and I think, you know, going globally and being across the world, now that impact is like, damn, I'm over in, in, in Asia, I'm in Africa and people calling me T-Mac. That, now that's something to be proud of. Yeah, my homeboy, his name was Tracy, but he don't got no Mc, McNuthin in his name. And he called himself T-Mac. All of a sudden, when you the man, he, he, call, he called himself T-Mac. Everybody <laughs> called him T-Mac now. I'm like, bro, <laughs> you ain't no McBride or nothing like that at the end of your life. You know what's crazy though, bro? Like we play with some of these dudes that we call them by their nickname, like a TJ Ford or, or yeah. whoever. You know how I, I don't know their real name? Yeah, yeah, something. You know how crazy know that is, bro? I don't know real name. J.R. Smith. Right. J.R. Smith. Smith. Yeah, J. I, just, I know J.R. Earl. Yeah. But I just, you know what I'm saying? When you playing, you don't know their real name. Yeah, like, exactly. I just found out TJ's name was Terrence. Yeah. yeah. So you ain't know that, did you? I didn't yeah. know that. I, I didn't I know. I've known TJ for a long time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me this, though. Like, you you one of the, one of the leaders of the, I guess the wave, like you, Cove, and them like of, of getting like your own line yeah. with them. Like, you know, you, oh, you, you been Adidas since day one, you lifetime, you like huge, but how was it when you, you know, you get your first deal, but then when they say, okay, we gonna give you your own shoe, Whole and then brand. you gonna get your own brand. Like, what does that conversation feel like? And if you were like, you say, once again, young kids straight out of high school and then went through what you had to go through to fight for this, like, and they tell you that, like, what are you thinking? That's, um. You know, I mean, that's that's just a fulfillment. Um, you know, when you grow up, man, on the playground, and you know, you identify who your favorite uh, player is. You know, and if he has a shoe like M everybody at MJ's, and yeah. then you know, when Penny had his own shoe, had Penny's, and for me, you know, even like Ken Griffey Jr. or Bo Jackson, like I right. had, they, I had their shoes. Like I wanted, I sniffs I, too, <laughs> right? Like I, I wanted, you know, guys that I idolize mm -hmm. and I admire. I wanted their shoes, so. For me to be in that position to have my own shoes and then right. have my own line was right. like, damn, dog, I'm one of these dudes. You yes, know what I'm saying? Yes, that yes, my, yes. And, and the, the little kids is gonna be inspired by me and wearing my stuff and just seeing that is like, that's that's gratifying. It's it's an unbelievable feeling, man, to have. You know what I'm saying? That you know my my kids, you know, uh, being out in public and seeing mm -hmm. people with with wearing the logo stuff, and wearing right. my stuff is like it's it's that's cool. When you was coming up, like who was the guys you was watching outside of MJ? Cause I know we all watch MJ, but some of them guys you like took to, to be like, man, I'm gonna take that and put it in my game. Or I need to have this to put in my game. Well, I love college basketball, bro. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? College basketball, I think when I was in high school, probably was at its best. Yes. The you know 90s? what I'm saying? I'm, it was crazy. Yeah. I'm talking about those Arkansas teams, those mm -hmm. UCLA teams, mm -hmm. those Kansas. Call us with now. Yes. Those those, Syrac dog, those Syracuse teams, the Purdue, UNLV, absolutely, <laughs> bro. Like so, everybody. one of my favorite players, and y'all gonna think I'm crazy. One of my favorite uh, college players back then played for he played for Syracuse. You know any Syracuse players? John Wallace, Lemire. I mean Moten. 
Moulton. Yeah. Lawrence Moulton. Lawrence Moulton, boy, with the socks. Lawrence <laughs> Moulton. Bucky. <laughs> Lawrence Moulton was one of my favorite yeah. college players, bro. Other than Jalen Rose was my dude, too. Yeah. But Lawrence Moulton, I was like, damn, I, I just loved his game. Calm, smooth. Like, he was a bucket. They used you know to play what every, what was that, Monday or Tuesday? They, Big Tuesday. Tuesday. Big, Big Tuesday. Big Tuesday. <laughs> you couldn't speed him up. Like, he just had this poise yeah. with him that I just, I really appreciate it. So, um, he was one of my favorite college players, along with Jay Rose, um, and then with the, the pros, of course. You know, Penny was Penny was yeah. my MJ. Yeah, you know what I'm saying that Penny in his prime years. Well, I, I don't same. even know if he really reached his prime years. You know, his earlier yeah. years, he was so dumb. He was so good, bro. Like Crazy. so good. Dude, crazy. You nice. know what I mean? That's crazy. How they I, fit in right away? As soon as he got wow. in. Wow. Like he was He's like, an all star right away. He was like, wow. Yeah. Smooth. <laughs> yeah. Cerebral. You know what I'm saying? Just he had it all, bro. Can facilitate. I was like, ooh. So and it looked I, good. It too. looks the so good. Yeah, yeah, oh, everything looked, just looked, looked so too good. sweet. I just looked, <laughs> yeah, man. Passes. You know what I'm saying? It just looked like, damn, dog. Portrait in motion. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that was my favorite. That was my MJ. But yeah, yeah man. When you got chose to play for the USA team, like, you know, like you say, everything is in line, and then now you finna put that USA team and all of us seeing the dream team. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How was that in that process? It was just, you know, you, you're proud to represent your country in that way. You know what I'm saying? It's the way for us to to honor, you know, our country and yeah. going out and competing, um, playing with, you know, other the best greats. Of the best. Yeah, playing mm -hmm. against other greats and going out and competing against the world, man. That that right there is just you know, I, I think everybody needs to experience yeah, something that, like yeah. that because you get an opportunity just to see, you know, global talent, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and you know, you just pulled up a video where a dude overseas is shooting threes. His, his whole game is predicated off shooting off threes, one leg. Yeah. Like, so you get to see different variations of guys' game and just the evolution of basketball. So, I mean, I, I appreciate it those times. Yeah. In 2013, you played in China for a minute. What was that experience like for you? Dude. Probably one of the, one of the greatest moments of my life, mm. and, and I say that like with all seriousness. You got to think for four years. Like once I had that knee surgery, I had micro fracture. Mm -hmm. I went from T Mac to Tracy, right? Mm -hmm. And it was no longer being celebrated as the NBA player that I once, once was. was. Yeah. So China gave me that opportunity to come over there, and I, I have a huge fan base in, in China, mm. huge fan base in China. So I was like, you know what? When I'm done playing, I'm gonna go and and, and show play some love. Yeah, I'm show some love and, play, and and play over here, bro. Once I announced that I was going to play in China, I sold out the whole CBA. Mm. And it was crazy. I'm talking about. I felt celebrated again, right? Because yeah. I, I, I'm not even and gonna lie. Needed. I'm not even gonna lie. I was depressed. Yeah, you know what I mean because. I had struggles. I had struggles with my with my teams in the playoffs. You know what I mean. I I, I just didn't have you know great play, great teams to elevate in the playoffs. And then, you know, when I did receive you know some help having run our tests, I can't compete because my mm -hmm. my my knee is blown you out. Want to end so like that. I'm like, damn, bro, it's gonna happen to me like this. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, like. I can't go out like this. And, yeah. and I went out like that. It was nothing that I could do. My knee right. was done. I wasn't yeah. the same player. So to have that opportunity to be celebrated yeah. again, uh, that was like, I, I perked back up. I was like, damn, okay. I'm loving it. I'm loving basketball again. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And I, I got it out my system. I, I got back. But dude, when I tell you, I used to pull up to the arenas and it was Thousands, <laughs> outside, thousands huh? of people outside waiting on the waiting on me to pull up, bro. It was crazy, man. I felt like the Beatles or something for real. Even in the airports, thousands. I understand what you were just saying about the depression because we we get built up and have our confidence so high, and you know we always want our our career to be the story dream career. We always want the farewell tours and the the Hall of Fames and yeah. all that. But when you don't get that, the depression. Mm -hmm. Like uh, one of the things I miss from playing is the the drilling that you get yeah. for being in a packed stadium mm -hmm. and everybody watching you play and the crowd mm -hmm. is into it and all that stuff. It's nothing that you can get that type of drilling. Mm -hmm. You can't hop on no plane mm -hmm. or or nothing no. like that. No. Like, what do you do to try to kind of 
<laughs> fulfill that, or it's just like you can't you can't duplicate that, bro. You can't duplicate. Nah, you can't duplicate that. You the the I think you know the league with the the camaraderie that we form with our teammates, man, yeah. and just going out every day. I mean, the even the battles within uh, your teammates, you know, because I mean, we all got different personalities, and yeah. you know what I'm saying. We clash heads, but at the end of the day, once we step on that floor together, you know, we together, we, 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 to, we together, we are we as one. But yeah, I just. You 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 can't you can't find that nowhere, yeah. bro. You cannot find yeah, that anywhere. It's just <laughs> nah, you you can't. I, I mean, especially you know those. I remember those NBC games, man. I just oh man, I just I just felt like a, a, a different player, bro. Even in playoffs, you just you got yeah. a different energy, a different bounce with yeah. you. You know what I'm saying? When you playing on national television or you competing against a Kobe or you know what I'm saying events, it's just a different. Balance and a you know a sense of excitement. Yeah. Start bench trade. Oh God. You gotta start Get one. In trouble. You gotta bench one. You gotta trade one. Kawhi Leonard, Carmelo Anthony, and Scottie Pippen. Who you start? Who you bench? Who you trade? Kawhi, Melo, and Scottie. Scottie. All of them in their primes. Not about their credentials. It's I'm about their game. Melo. You start, start mellow. I start. Oh God! You will start mellow. <laughs> he might go think about. It. Damn. I'll start. I'll. Who? I'll start mellow. <laughs> That's tough. I'm sorry. Man, Scotty has a different element because his defense. He was just so elite, bro. And then. You you really never got to see um, his offensive prowess because of of MJ. I mean, you seen it, you know, the the year and a half MJ retired, but he, I think he was much older. I think, forget it, man. I go mellow. I'm gonna start mellow. I'm a bitch, um, Scotty, and I'm a what was it? Cut. Yeah, cut and cut uh, Kawhi. Okay, jerseys. You gotta keep one. You gotta have one for the next day, and you gotta get rid of one. Uh oh. First jersey is the purple Toronto Raptors jersey okay. with the stripes. Okay. Second jersey is the Orlando Magic yeah, pinstripe. Pin stripe. I knew you was coming with that one. And the third jersey is the Rockets gold and Oh, no, no you, you throw that in the trash. You throw, <laughs> you throw that one away. You throw the Rockets joint in, in Which the one first out of the pinstripe? The, pin, the pinstripe. The, the, pin, the, the pinstripe. The pinstripe and then, pinstripe, yeah, man. the pinstripe <laughs> and then that, that Toronto Raptors jersey. and. You know, the rock is joint, you could trash that. <laughs> I feel like it's only a few people that should be, you know, that's really privileged to really answer this question. You got G14 classified. So when he say like star bench cut, uh oh. This is the me this is the realest one. I know where you going. <laughs> I know where you go. Oh when, when you said that, I know you yeah, go. Yeah, you got three G14. Greatest. So yeah. let's you this know three I'm, 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 I'm gonna try to get there. You go, LeBron, Kobe, MJ. Somebody yeah, I think it. just reverse that order. Mm. MJ, Kobe, LeBron. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. MJ, Kobe, LeBron. Yeah. He made that yeah. easy. Okay. Yeah. That's just reverse that this, order. So, so, so I don't want to get into who should have came off. I just want to ask you, because we definitely feel like you should have been top 75. It's some, you know, some we other know guys. We know too, what it is. But yeah. I just want to know what's your feelings on that? Because like, I. We don't get into who should have yeah. been out, but like we yeah. know for a fact, for sure. your I know you part of my seventy five. You should have been like, what are your feelings on not being part of that? Um, I to to me, it didn't sway me because if you look at it, I got the ultimate achievement as a basketball player. Hall mm -hmm. of Fame, right? Making it to the Hall. So I mean, there's going to be a top one hundred here in a few years. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I. You know, that that doesn't bother me at all, man. Yeah. You know, I, I I look at it, and not even for me, I look at it like, you know, Dwight Howard. Yeah, absolutely. For eight years was a monster. Yes. You know absolutely. what I'm saying? Impact dominant. on the game, extremely dom dominant. Yeah. Five times first team all NBA. Took his team, you know. Player. I played with him. Yeah. I got to see what I'm saying. Like, 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 I remember I helped lead his team to, a, to the finals. I mean, for eight years, the man was pretty damn dominant. 20, 30 to, rebounds, to, to, to leave him off, uh, that now that's disrespectful. That's a tragedy. But 
you know, it is what it is. You know, we know what it is as players. Well, yeah, you know what I'm saying? We know who should be on there. And we don't even speak about it, but yeah. nothing beats the hall. Nothing beats the hall. <laughs> nothing Jackie, beats the hall. Nothing yeah. Beats the hall. Yeah. So I, it, <laughs> nothing you know, beats the it's, hall. It's, it's all good. Tell me about your one on one league that you're developing and coming up with. Yeah, man. So, you know, I, I think one on one doesn't really get its due. Mm-hmm. You know, with with the others, uh, whether it's five on five, whether it's three on three, mm-hmm. bro. One on one is the foundation of basketball. There's one on one in, in five on five organized basketball, right? Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that, if you have what Dennis Rodman, what was Dennis Rodman? What did what he do? Yeah. He rebound, rebound. right? Yeah. That was that was his job to rebound. Hall of Fame for rebound. Whoever whoever he matched up against, his job was to keep his ass off the off that glass that yeah. night, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. That's, a, that's a one-on-one battle right there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How do we train? Do we train for five on five? What do we train? We train, train one indivi- on one. we train yeah, one-on-one, yeah, yeah. right? So I, I, I think that's lost. And I go back to what I was saying about my childhood. One-on-one gave me that competitive spirit. Yeah. It gave me uh, to never quit, to f- keep fighting because it's just me versus you. Yeah. There's no defense. There's no coaches. There's no. There's nobody. You know to to stop me from. If I get around you, there's nobody else to deviate that. It helped you on your individual defense. It helped you on your individual defense. It helped you on your mentality. Mm-hmm. And I think you know I'm just trying to bring that to light. Also, I'm I'm trying to give people an opportunity, uh, a second chance. You know what I'm saying? Like. We probably, I don't know where you guys come from, but I, I told you my story. If I didn't have that structure within my home, I would have deviated off, mm, off yeah. that course and, and made some stupid decisions. There's a lot of guys out there that probably did that, yeah. but now they're a little bit older, they're on the right path, and they still can play at a high level. They still have a passion for the game and, and dedicated to it, and I want to provide that opportunity for them with this league. This is not a gimmick. You know what I'm saying? This is something that I want to have a big, big platform, and I want – one-on-one basketball to be a staple in sports. So I'm creating this league for those people that still have a passion. It's not for professional basketball players, not NBA players, but it could be for, you know, guys that play overseas. Uh, uh, What's the name of it? It's called uh, One's Basketball Association. So that's what I'm building, man. I, I just, I think it's needed. Um, there's a lot of underground leagues uh, that have these guys playing in these leagues, and there's betting going on with one on one basketball. Right. So I'm providing a major platform to have those guys participate in. And let me ask you this: You're from Chicago. You're from St. Louis. You can't tell me it ain't no guys in Chicago and St. Lu- St. Louis Everywhere. that will give your elite, our elite guys in the NBA, the business right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right. Get them on that ISO and get your ass work. And, and <laughs> right now, trust me, right now. And, and that's what I, I that's what I want, man. I just wanted to provide that second chance opportunity for a lot of guys that you know may have missed their um, their chances when they were younger. So we talked about some of the contracts that you didn't had, and some of the, you know some. I don't want to talk about. Obviously, you retired, mom, Dukes, and the fam when you first got that bread, which is which is you know that's dope. I want to hear. What you about to say? I want to hear something extravagant, something crazy yeah, that you did you when you got you. that. What T Mac did? Man, we know you didn't did a lot to treat yourself. You could just, I don't know, you got a plain jet. I already know what y'all I, hitting that got, though. Got, so got food yeah, courts in your house. You got indoor pools, outdoor pools. I mean, what do you want to say? That, that, like, about, what, about I just want to hear. You want to hear about the plane? Hey, listen, why not? I mean, that's that's gonna be that's gonna be the best joint we can read you. Hey, listen, tell us about the jet. What did? How did that come about? When did you? Side, you know what? What kind of jet was? I'm gonna it? get it. I, I had a Falcon 2000, so uh, it was a uh, it was a it was a, it was a corporate jet. It's probably is one of the best traveling jets that you could have, um, like a 11 11 passenger. Oh, we want to know. <laughs> How much was? It was a lot. Uh, <laughs> it, it was a lot. It, it was 19 million. So <laughs> 19 million. Did you hear that? <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit, you had a 19 million jet. It was it was 19 million. So what happened? Had that happened on here, yeah. I'm sorry. So so what happened? Well, I had a business manager that you know knew how to structure those deals. You know what I'm saying for me, and you know we talked about it and made sure it made financial you know sense, sense to, to, yeah. to do something like that. And I was like, shit, let's go for it. You know, I went to I think I flew to Kansas. 
um, to to pick out, you know, how I wanted my jet to look. Yeah, and that T Mac sign on the side of that jet. On the side of that jet. On the side of that jet. I had I had my my tail number was, was TM eight six three eight six three is an area code where I'm from, and then I had T one Mac mm-hmm. on, on the plane. Ooh. Um. So yeah, man. And you know, what, what was crazy though, bro? I had you know my my same pilot, so I rotated my pilots, and then I had you know a couple stewardess, so yeah. they knew what I liked. It was it was so convenient. Had your, your certain meals and food. They had and snacks. every when I get on the plane, bro. They had everything lined up for me. But my kids, though, you know, what I'm saying this is my kids are younger. My kids was loving it. They loved my kids, and when I when I sold my jet. Man, when I tell you my kids were so mad at me, bro. Oh, you the messed up in the, the oh, you the messed hey, up household. Every oh, time we used to go to the airport, every time we used to travel, but they asked me, "Are we going to the the yeah. private airport?" I was like, oh, "We nah, got to go through the customs. <laughs> we got to go through all this." What happened when we used but, to just walk on that job? <laughs> but no, nah, it was so convenient, man. You know, it was so convenient, and because I traveled a lot, and then I was afraid to, you know, after nine eleven, I was really afraid yeah, to, yeah. to to fly commercial. Yeah. Um. So when 9-11 happened, I didn't fly commercial until I was with the USA team when we went to Puerto Rico. It was just all private planes. Yeah, I just had had a fear, man. It was anxiety. Nice. I mean, I was a little scared too, but I still had to do what I had to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's as you know, so I, you ain't the only one that was scared. We gonna, so, we gonna make yeah, it do man, the dude. That's, 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 hey, I had my own plane. I heard you, um, you've, been, you've been camel racing. <laughs> well, tell, us, tell us about the. Uh, <laughs> oh, tell I told you about that. Boy, man. Yeah, culture, yeah. boy. Tell, you know, tell us about this, this, now, this, man. this camel racing with the mocha trolls. Yeah, you had. So, with the drones. <laughs> no, this is something. Uh, I, t- I took a trip to uh, to Qatar. It was, uh, I think it was me, Melo, uh, Clay Thompson, and uh, Luke Walton. So, we took a trip over there to promote the World Cup. Mm-hmm. And. They asked us about, did we want to do some camel uh, racing? Uh, I didn't know what it was like. Yeah, why not? I'll go see some camels race. It was like, you gonna, are you going to participate? It was like, how? You know what I'm saying? It was like, you'll see when we get out there. So we go to this track. We on, you know, we on the road, on the runway. <laughs> and the, the, the horses, I mean, the uh, Camel. camels are over here. And they give us some remote controls. I'm like, yo, what are these remote controls for? They got a little man on, on the, the on the camel. camels with a with a whip, <laughs> the whip of the with camel. a whip. So we controlling the the, the dude, you know, the mini the, the dude whipping. on the whip, on the camel with the whip, and just spanking his ass. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, you know me, I'm a fool. I was just kept, I kept getting up there. Nah, he was tearing his ass up, and I ended up winning that race. But I ain't never, oh, yeah, never no, seen anything that. like hell. No, nah, I, I didn't know what to expect. But nah, that was dope, though. You know what I'm saying? Having a little dude on there with the whip, that was some crazy <laughs> shit. Though I enjoyed that. <laughs> For me, y'all, because y'all have Hall of Fame careers like you, Kobe and LeBron and KG. Like it's, it's it who makes you say? You, Kobe, LeBron, oh. and KG. It makes me feel like. Really, really part of something by being one of the players that went straight high, out of high, high school. school and being a part of that forty-five person group in in inside of this big NBA organization. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That we have. Like, how is it for you to like you know to see like yeah, I went straight out of high school, but to see how successful a lot of guys yeah. that went straight out of high school then become. I um, man, when you look back on it, um. High school guys was the face of the NBA. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? You heard that cute? Oh, you wouldn't know nothing about this. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't know nothing about this. You look at KG. You look at Cole, myself. Um, I mean, when LeBron came in, he just yeah. you know <laughs> overtook everybody's shine. But uh, Amari, Dwight Howard, yourself, um, man, high school guys Jermaine really. O'Neal. Jermaine O'Neal, mm-hmm. Lou Will, J.R. Smith, like high school, high school guys really came in and held it down. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Um, and and I can't leave out, there's a lot of high school guys that didn't pan out that yeah. tried to make that jump. But yeah. the ones that, that actually stayed for 10 plus stuck. years, I mean, they, we did a hell of a job of of making a name for ourselves and, and and really representing high school guys well. So, what do you think is the percentage? Because it's it's 
it's 45 that they count that had like like more than four or five years in the league. It's like 45 that mm-hmm. they count. What you think of the percent? You think it was 15 guys that, that didn't, didn't make it? Yeah. Like I about think, 15 that yeah, didn't make a, it and about 45 that had nice careers. Yeah, in I, I think there's, and it might be more than that, guys tried to come out. Mm-hmm. I think it's a little bit more than that. Um, that was unsuccessful in trying to make it. But I mean, damn, the, the guys that did, you know, not a hit. Hall of Fame careers and, of and fame household careers, names and recognized, you yeah, know, worldwide. Big yeah, big, 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 and, big contracts. You know what I'm saying? Like, like a lot of guys yeah. did a lot of stuff. Yeah, so you know, high school, we held it down. Yeah, that's a, we that special forces group, you know, inside the NBA. You know, we ain't all stars the Hall of Fame, but that's just special forces group right there in that room <laughs> in the NBA building. That's us right there. Straight out high school. That's y'all. You college, got these college kids. kids. You know, you know these college kids. It's my you know oldest boy. My oldest boy, man. You know, he went to college. <laughs> How many years you did, Q? Two. Two. Oh, that's yeah, pretty damn good, bro. He, you know what I'm he waiting on me. After his sophomore year, was it DuPaul? Yeah, man. Yeah, he he waiting on me. That's all. He was just waiting for me to come. Had to wait for my oldest son to get there. You know, pops to come. He waiting on me. I tell you, man. I ain't, listen, I used to y'all. I used to hate playing y'all. Y'all doing that that this shit. <laughs> I used to make it you know, personal to try to destroy oh, no, y'all. We man. Used to see it. We used to see it. <laughs> yeah. We kick right, guys. Y'all gotta get we out got that game in in L. A. At the end of the game, I blocked your shot. Forty seven that game. Yeah, we. We got that game in LA and I was like, I don't even know how we beat him because this boy went crazy on us. We got to Orlando. Boy, y'all kicked our ass so quick and got us up out of there. I said, yeah. I remember I remember that. <laughs> I remember one particular play too, because I, I was really trying to go at you and get you back. You know what I'm saying? I remember a play. Um, I don't know if somebody gave me a pass or I got or a rebound or something, but I was like in a corner. So this is the basket. I was in a corner right here. I think somebody made me a pass and I like jab step and went to the middle and you slipped and fell. Yeah. I don't know if you remember that. You uh-huh. slipped and fell, but I went in there and dunked that bitch so hard. <laughs> Boom! I tried to tell the random because I tried to get y'all back, man. Yeah, I don't like I don't like scoring 40 plus points and losing. And losing. I don't I do not like that. That yeah. that is one of my biggest pet peeves. Though. I, I hate that putting up those numbers and you lose the game. I don't like it. Oh yeah, we got lucky yeah. that game. Good defense at the end. We was going at it in LA. We was we fighting, I'm, I'm like, we was fighting, I'm trying bro, but y'all had too much. Team that, yeah, team didn't like us celebrating and, and dunking and it seemed like we was showboating, but we was just trying to play hard Listen, and prove ourselves every night. If I, I, I don't know what happened with that team, but if they would have kept y'all together, bro, <laughs> yeah. if they would have kept y'all, it Wasn't was, Elton Brand with y'all? Yeah. Bro, and Drake nobody Elton. had- they Q had, was with y'all? I mean, uh, not Q, but Cat. Was Cat with nah, y'all? Cat with us. Okay, that was, that was me, Lamar, Q, Elton, Corey. Bro, if they would have kept y'all together, man, y'all would have been dangerous. And we had money to pay for two, two Max superstars. Guys, two Max like guys. We was all on rookie deals still. I mean, but you know, we, bad, bad organizations We couldn't even get in the way. club or buy no liquor. We, <laughs> we didn't have Some blue black rounds on just our love to just, you know, mess names up, man, because y'all had a good thing going. Y'all had a lot of talent, bro. Yeah. A lot of talent, a lot of versatility too. Shooting, you know, you had yeah. you being able to run the point. We had a you had LO being able to run the point. Yeah, yeah. I had a power four, a 20 and 10, 20 and yeah. 10 power, power four. four. Corey McGetty, the slasher. Yeah. But y'all was stacked with young talent. Yeah, yeah. and they broke us up. They man. broke y'all up, and that was it. Hey, man, this been dope. We out here live on location in H Town, man. You had us pull up to your, to your up, palace. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, yeah. this been dope. We got the man, the myth, the legend. The Mac. Jet plane man, <laughs> T-Mac in the building, baby. No, nah, I man, appreciate y'all a, having me. What y'all got for me, got man? Special bottle, yeah, we know you. Yeah, man, we, get, we with you them know, Hennessy boys. Look good in the BSOP. crib. We know you don't drink, man, we but this is a showpiece anyway, man. Yeah, we got man. them boys I, on I the back. I appreciate it, man. You know what I'm saying? I might have to store this on the jet. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All love, man. Appreciate y'all boys.